If you're one of those crazy people that like to use WordPress core alongside full site editing and Gutenberg and so on, you may have come across limitations. Well, let's be honest about it, you're probably going to come across lots of limitations because, well, there are lots of limitations to it. Anyway, one of the key things for me is the real lack of any kind of control or substantial control over handling anything to do with dynamic data. Sure, you can pull in things like title and content stuff from the native WordPress itself. But when you add in Advanced Custom Fields or Advanced Custom Fields Pro, you don't have any real simple way of being able to pull that data into your templates, to your content, and so on. That's where I wanted to take a look at a free and pro plugin today. I'm only going to look at the free version, and this might be enough for what you're looking to do. But if you want to take a look at the pro version, you can do. And it's a plugin called Metafield Block. So let me show you how it works. Then we'll take a look at the limitations on the free version and what you get in the pro version should you want to update or upgrade to it. So I have just a standard copy of WordPress using the 2025 theme. And I've got Advanced Custom Fields Pro. Don't need Pro, you can use free. So you can use that. And Metafield Block, which, like I say, is the free version. So let's go into Appearance and go into the editor. And from here, let's open up our templates. Now, I've got a custom post type called Recommended Tools. And for that, I'm going to need to have things like an archive and a single post template. So what I've done is I've created a template here. So if we open this up, we've got a combination of just basic WordPress information like the post title, featured image, and so on. But we've also got some additional fields being pulled in using this plugin. So for example, you can see we've got the price. If you want to add other things inside you, you can add most things in from the basic fields like your text, your links, and things like that, images. You can't use the gallery and so on. They are premium features. So if you need that function, you're going to need to look at the pro version. But for basic, simple things, you may be able to get away with the free version. So how does it work? It's very simple. Let me just get rid of this completely. Let's go and add a new one in. Let's expand this out, and let's add a new option in here. So we've got the placeholder. What we're going to do is we're going to do the forward slash and type in meta, and that will open up the meta field block. And this is just the only block element you need. All the controls for what you want to pull in and so on are controlled by this particular block. So let's add that in. So you can see this now says, what do you want to kind of do? If we now take a look at the right hand side, you can see we can open up the field type. So by default, this is using the meta field. Let's open this up. And you can see we've got advanced custom fields. Now, there are more things you can do here. And if you'd like me to go into more detail and maybe even take a look at the pro version of this and how you can use this to build out your templates and add more sort of dynamic data into them, let me know in the comment section down below. If enough people are interested, I'll create something. But let's choose the advanced custom fields option. Once we do that, we open up the field name, and you can see that we've got all the fields I've got associated and available to me inside you. So things like, is it a free version, the price, affiliate links, and so on. So all we need to do is put in the actual name of the ACF field we want to use. So if we come out of here a second, so if we take a quick look at the fields that I've got in ACF, you can see I've got custom meta fields called recommended tools. If we open this up, you can see there we go, free version, price affiliate link, and so on. Open these up and you can see they're just check boxes or text boxes or number fields and so on. You'll see I've got a gallery created here, which is available as part of my dashboard, and I can add gallery images in. But you'll notice if we take a look inside here, gallery is available, but if we put that in, nothing will show up because we need the pro version. OK, so all we need to do is just pop in what we want. So let's say for this example, we want to put the price in. So I'll just type in price. It would be nice if you could just click on these and add them in, but it doesn't. You can choose the option then to hide the block if the value is empty. So you can drop that. Choose that option if you want. Now, you could easily use this in conjunction with another free plugin, which is the Block Visibility plugin by Nick Diego. Totally free plugin, but again, this would open up more options. So if you wanted to pull in dynamic data and you wanted to be able to manually control how it's shown, when it's shown, and all those kinds of good things, that's a plugin you may want to check out. Check out the video here to see more about it. Link in the description down below so you can check it out for yourself. OK, so let's say we'll hide that if it's empty. You can then add in a prefix or a suffix. So if you've used something like Elementor with dynamic data, you know you've got a prefix and a suffix. You also have a fallback, which we don't have here. But we can have that simple conditional logic. If it's empty, don't show it. So we don't really need a fallback there. Prefix, up to you if you want to put in. We'll put in price, put a colon, a space in, and a suffix. And we'll just put in brackets. There we go. Now you see everything stacks on top of each other. Well, we can handle that with the display layout. We can say we want to put this as an inline block, and now everything lines up nice and neat. And now if you want to control the styling on this, you just hop over to your styling tab, and all your normal options are here. So if you want to change the color of this, let's say you want to make this blue, for example, and you wanted to make it small, and you wanted to change the appearance and padding and spacing and all those kinds of good things, all those options are available inside here as well. You can also control the sizing and so on of the prefix and the suffix. So we may say we want the suffix to be slightly smaller. 
So let's say we put that in small, and you can see that now controls that one independently. As with lots of things behind Gutenberg, these are options that are hidden away that are not plainly obvious. So you do have to click on the little three options, and then you can expand those out and add those in should you want to. So it's very simple to do, very easy, and you can add more options inside here. So if you want to add another field in, you can simply come over. We'll say we want to add another one in underneath this, and we'll just say add after, come back over to our template, select this, and we'll go into meta, add that meta field block in, or our block, change this again over to ACF. You can see there's our options in there. We can say if there's a discount code, and you see there's no value there because this one doesn't actually have any discount code associated with it. So we can say hide if it's empty. Again, you're prefixing your suffix, so you may want to put something in there. You can also use the field label if you want to. After you, you want to work with these options. You know, you get control over these various different things. And again, you display layout, prefix, suffix, all those kinds of good things. Hit save, and now if we take a look at this on the front end, we can see there's our core framework, advanced theme and so on. You can see there's the actual price, the prefix of the suffix. And you see there's my discount code on this particular one where I've actually got one. It's very simple. And if you've used dynamic data in any other tool, you'll know how this kind of thing all works. And like I say, this is just the basics of what you can do. So we take a look at the website. This will give you some information about it, how it works. There's a couple of videos here. They're okay. They're not necessarily the most detailed and they kind of focus on the pro version. But if you go and take a look at Explore Pro, you scroll down, you can see this will show you the difference between the free and the pro version. So in the free version, we get the post meta fields, term meta fields, user, running short codes. You can hook into the APIs to display things, your basic fields. You've also got images, links, query fields in basic format and so on. But if you take a look at the pro version, this has an awful lot of options, including setting fields. You can use relationships, the group, repeater fields, gallery fields. So if you wanted to pull this in and create a far more comprehensive designs, using Gutenberg, full site editing and so on. This is gonna give you a lot of options. Pricing wise, it's not too bad. $40 for a single site, 100 for 10 sites or 200 for unlimited sites. You can select a lifetime deal if you want. I think maybe 500 bucks for this is a little bit steep, but you know, if you need it, you need it. And if you're doing this for paid clients, you could probably make your money back pretty quickly. So that's the Metablog plugin. You can see it's pretty simple to get set up. There's a lot more you can do with it, especially if you take a look at the premium version. And like I say, if you'd like me to cover that in more detail, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll take a look at grabbing the license. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.